as well. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more. I want to talk about something interesting. Today, I want to talk about uh, snags. <laughs> now, we've all heard that term, you know? Oh, well, everything was going great until I hit a snag. Well, let me tell you a little bit of the history of that term and also tell you a story. For those of you who have never been to Kansas City and for those of you who live in Kansas City, and I know we've got a number of you here, including my friend Jerome and Mike lives out in Warrensburg, there is a... Uh, Oh, gosh, what would you call it, I guess? Uh, an event, not an event venue, but a uh, an amusement, uh, something that you would go and see, a museum called the Steamship of Arabia Museum in downtown Kansas City. And I highly recommend, if you have not gone to see it, go check it out. Not long after I moved to Kansas City, several people recommended that I go and see it. And I thought, seriously, you, you, you want me to go and walk around a museum that's full of stuff that was before the Civil War that was found that was, no, it doesn't sound like fun. And yet I went and had a blast. Don't you love when you go to something and your expectations are low so that you have such a wonderful time when they're gratefully exploded, they're, they're, they're surpassed? The last time I was in Kansas City, which was just a few months ago, I went to the steamship of Arabia and took someone with me and we walked around and looked at all of the various things. Let me tell you the story of the steamship of Arabia. The steamship of Arabia was a 171 foot steamship or paddle wheel boat that went up and down the Missouri river in the late 1800s. It was made, it was built in 1853 and its job was to carry up to 222 tons of, uh, provisions for people who were moving west in the United States. Of course, St. Louis is known as the Great Dividing Line. You've got the Gateway Arch there. But Kansas City, just a few few hours further by car, considerably further by boat and by uh, over overland uh, wagon, uh, is not much further. And Kansas City, just outside of Kansas City, is where the steamship of Arabia sank. Now, this is not an actual image of the steamship of Arabia. This is a modern day remake of a paddle wheel boat. The steamship of Arabia was going up the coast of, uh, was going up the Missouri River rather, and it was fully laden with glass and buttons and whiskey. I mean, everything you can think of that people needed who were living out on the frontier. There was tons and tons of, um, axe heads and hatchet heads and things like that, as well as the actual handles that people would use to put them to assemble once they got there together. Instead of sending the axe all in one piece, they sent the handles and they sent the, the uh, head of the, the axe. Now, the steamship sank and the great, uh, not rivalry, but the great uh, story about this is whether or not the mule that was on the deck, which unfortunately died, was tied up or untied. I'll leave that to you. You should do some research to find out whether or not the mule was left to die or whether or not someone untied the mule and the mule still died. The interesting thing is they found the mule's skeleton and it was still tied to the rail. So that should tell you. Now, when the steamship of Arabia went down in 1856, it sank along with many other steamships, many other paddle wheel boats sank in the Missouri River and other rivers. Now in 1990, let me look at my notes here, 1998, I think it was, Bob Hawley, 1988, Bob Hawley, who is an AC repair guy in Kansas City, he and his sons, he has a business there, they were actually in a man's home. And the man was a conspiracy theorist. The man had pictures of Bigfoot and where Bigfoot had been, maps where Bigfoot had been sighted. Um, the man was into alien abduction, all the kinds of things that you can think of that might make you go, hmm. <laughs> um, and one of the things that he had was a listing of where these paddle wheel boats had uh, sank in the Missouri River. Now, that one item 
caught the attention of the people who were there to repair this man's air conditioning, the Hawley family. And they came back, and uh, Bob Hawley, the father, became obsessed with this. And he ended up telling three, three friends, and they too became obsessed with this idea. And they decided to try and find one of these sunken paddle wheel boats. And the one that they chose to find was the Arabia. Now, you would think that if a boat sinks in the Missouri River, which is not all that deep comparatively to the deep blue ocean, that you would simply be able to go out there and look for it, that you would be able to look for it using metal detection and sonar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They never found the ship, at least not looking conventionally. And then what they figured out was that during the history of the Missouri River, the United States... Um, Army, what do you call it, Army Corps of Engineers, had literally changed the course of the river, that the river today, and or back then in 1988, was not the same course of the river as it had been in 1856. And they discovered that the steamship of Arabia was not at the bottom of the Missouri River currently, it was a half a mile away and 40 feet underground in a cornfield. Now, lots of people had come out there and had tried to find the steamship of Arabia. Other people had actually figured out that it was in this cornfield. The challenge was when it dug, when people dug down using equipment, they discovered that the steamship had actually been buried in an aquifer. In other words, it had sunk in the river, and then the river had continued to go around it, and it literally was still underwater, even though it was in the bottom of this cornfield a half a mile from the Missouri River. Now, this new team that was run by Hawley and his family and his three friends, they actually figured out a way to pump out the aquifer, to, to pump the water out so they could get down to the steamship of Arabia. And what they discovered was the greatest uh, discovery of artifacts, of pre-Civil War artifacts in history. If you go there, and they are still to this day, Day. They let you walk through and you can see the stuff that they found and how they are very gently cleaning it away with water and, and making it uh, something that was beautiful just like it was in the day. So why did I bring all this up? Number one, it's an interesting story. It's an interesting story. This family not only sought out the steamship of Arabia, as a lot of other people did, they kept looking. And unlike people who had actually found it, the one uh, group who had actually found it in the past, they figured out a way to pump the water out so they could actually get down there. Now, how did the steamship of Arabia sink? How did it sink? It's an interesting story. It hit a snag. Now, you and I have both used that term many, 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 many times. Well, I was going along fine, and then all of a sudden, I hit a snag. Here's the interesting thing about the term snag when it relates to the steamship of Arabia and other paddle wheel boats. Hitting a snag is not something that is floating along in the river. What is a snag? Well, one of the things that we don't think about when we think about people traveling by paddle wheel boat, we think that they get on the boat and the boat just goes like a cruise ship and they go up the river. Not true. They would have to stop every day or so and they would have to spend hours, hours cutting trees along the bank. The trees would then be burned in the boilers to create power for the paddle wheel to move the boat up and down the Missouri River. As they cut these logs, they would then throw in pieces that they did not need. And this was a big mistake. They should have left the pieces that they did not need along the side of the bank. In other words, on the ground. However, what would often happen is that people on these paddle boats would, uh, or the crews on these boats, would bring pieces of logs out to the boat and they would cut them there and then they would throw them in the water the pieces that they felt they could not use if you've ever cut firewood before like i have you cut down a tree 
you cut out the pieces you can use and there's going to be lots of gnarled pieces, et cetera, et cetera, either too thick to burn or just like I say, gnarled and you're just unable to make anything happen with them. So what did these people do? Many times what they would do is instead of cutting those pieces off and leaving them on the bank, they would bring the huge pieces onto the boat. They would then cut the pieces and they would throw them into the water. They would then throw them into the water and that is called a snag. They would hit a snag. A snag is something of your own creation. Let me say that again. So often we go along, oh, everything was going fine, and then we hit a snag. A snag is something of your own creation. It is your own poor planning when we're talking about steamships. And in many cases, that's true of our own lives as well. They created the snag that sunk the steamship of Arabia. How did they do that? By throwing a huge log into the water, which, by the way, when you go to the Steamship of Arabia Museum, and I highly recommend you do it, they should be giving me a commission for this, I highly recommend you go. They still have the piece of the bow with the snag in it, the huge log. And you can see, of course, why this would happen. So what happens is they cut this piece of log that they felt like they could not use. Rather than putting it back on the bank because they were already on the boat, they throw it in the water. Now, what happens then? It floats along down the river, but it's heavy. It's a piece of wood. So a piece of it falls down into the muddy water, and it then becomes like a stabbing thing that as you're coming along is going to hit you because one piece, which is heavier, sinks into the mud, leaving the other piece like this. Your boat comes along and you sink. All of this to say, we all hit snags. And all of this to say that most of the time, we blame that snag on someone other than ourselves when, just like with the steamship of Arabia and other boats, the snag was created by the person experiencing the snag. We want to blame other people. We want to get mad. We want to get angry. We, we want to make it all about someone else. When in reality, in most cases, we're the ones that cut that piece of wood. We're the ones that threw it in the water rather than putting it on the bank. And then we're the ones dealing with the snag. So what I want to do is to invite you today to become aware of the little things that you leave for yourself to have to deal with later. Let me tell you a snag I've got right now. Of course, many of you know I lived in Kansas City for 20 years, and now I live in Key Largo, Florida. Well, my business is now located in Florida, and one of the things I neglected to do <laughs> was tell Missouri that I have moved my business as well as myself to Florida. So I get this tax bill, which is related to absolutely nothing. The state of Florida thinks that I've sold products and you know bracelets and things, like, Missouri rather, and so now I'm having to deal with this. And I wrote them a letter explaining that I moved here, changed my business, et cetera. And then I got a letter saying that it doesn't matter. You still owe it, et cetera. Even though I was not, my company did not exist in the state of Missouri during the time period. Now, I can get all upset at the state of Missouri, et cetera. I tried calling. No one answers the phone. Blah, 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 blah. Now, whose responsibility was it to not put this snag in the water so that it was going to hit me a year later? Me, me. I got busy, though. We all get busy. So I want you to become aware of the snags that you hit today and to look and see if you had any part in their creation. And more importantly, stop creating snags. Take care of your little details. When you see something that could be a, a potential snag in the future, handle it now. It's always better to handle something now when it's small than later when it's big and it's tearing a hole in your bow. Yes, Natasha says a snag is something of our own creation. Absolutely. All right, everybody, it is now 824. We've got six minutes before our complaint-free meditation groups gets together. If you haven't checked it out, it will change your life. I guarantee it. 
I guarantee it because you'll get your old life back if it doesn't. <laughs> Here is the image that I've picked for today's meditation. Check it out. Now, how could you not be calm with that? So if you haven't yet, check out Complaint Free Meditation. ComplaintFreeMeditation.com. We meditate together every weekday. Thank you all for being with us. Natasha says this is great. Natasha, thank you so much. Be sure and share this with your uh, people at your child care center. We love that. I guess snags can also become ruts. There you go, Ed. I guess if we push it long enough, then it can be. Check out ComplaintFreeMeditation.com. ComplaintFreeMeditation.com. Cindy Little says, Blessful. Thank you, Will. Is the Complaint Free Meditation still at a discount rate? Yes. When we started the Complaint Free Meditation program, we set a price of $97 a month. And then the pandemic hit. We dropped it to 47 and we got a bunch of people who signed and now we've dropped it to $25 a month. If you come in now, we will lock you in at 25 bucks a month, which is less than a dollar a day. And you literally meditate with me anytime. And we have a library now of over 75 meditations. You can go back and meditate at any time. Lisa Bartel says, have a rocking weekend, everyone. I'm going to say the same thing. Have a great weekend. Be sure and share this. Click share. Remember, share is not just a headliner in Vegas, not just Sonny's former wife. Be sure and click share. That's how we build this audience. I look today and we're almost almost hitting 100,000 people a month. We're at 94,000 people that we're reaching on a monthly basis. And this is awesome. Thanks, everybody. Where's the link to join? Let me close this out. Facebook now is being, in my opinion, a little overly helpful, everybody. www.complaintfreemeditation.com. We do it we save the meditations in two forms. They are in a library uh, as well as on Facebook. So we do it inside of a private Facebook group. So once you join, you simply request to be a member of the group. You, you, you will send you an email that explains it. You request to be a member of the group. I personally admit you into the group, and then you can meditate with us. So it is a members-only group, and it is open to you if you choose to check it out. Thanks again for everybody for making this a wonderful week, being with me every morning. I'll be with you live and early, 8 a.m. Monday morning. See you then. Make it a great weekend. Love you all. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more.